Hey guys, Bearded Appliance Repair, got another one for you. It's going to be a KitchenAid wall oven where its display is completely blank. Not getting any lights, can't run anything, nothing's happening on it whatsoever. But, before we get to it, going to try something new this week. Um, I guess we'll call it Bearded Appliance Repair's Trivia Question of the Week. We'll probably have to come up with a better name than that. If you guys have any suggestions, put in the comment below. Anyways, what we're getting to, I'm um, going to ask you guys a question. It's going to be appliance-related, um, diagnosis-wise. So, whenever I ask a question, you guys answer in the comments below, and I'll give you guys the answer um, in my next video that pops up. You know, might be a little fun. Uh, if you guys like to do it, fine if I get some comments and if you guys don't I'll just won't do it and I'll just keep to what I'm usually doing but uh, trying to keep you guys engaged maybe you guys will learn something uh, this week though it's gonna be an easy one question is if you have if you're working on a range or an oven and your bake element and your broil element do not work both of them at the same time um, there's a few things it could be. What do you think it is? Comment below. Anyways, we're going to get to this KitchenAid wall oven right here in just a few. Alright, this KitchenAid wall oven. Like I was saying before, dead display. Nothing's going on with it whatsoever. Um, I'll show you guys what it looks like right now. Yeah, so that's what this KitchenAid wall oven looks like. And I know the lights are on. That was taken after the repair was actually done and everything. So, I digress. This oven. You won't see it here at the beginning. Um, but there's two little screws after you open the door. I didn't get footage of it, so I apologize. You'll see it at the end. So, if you guys want to know what I'm talking to, just skip all the way back to the end. And uh, you'll see the two screws I'm talking about. But if you have this oven, you open the door, two screws, one on the left, one on the left, <laughs> and one on the right. Um, you take those out, and then you want to pull it out a little bit. Um, then on the control panel, it's on the top side of it, you got two screws on each side. Two here, two here. You want to take those, those four out. Uh, once you take those four out, that panel lifts off, you can pull it towards you. Y'all will see all that. Um, once you get that panel off, it exposes that fuse I was talking about. And by the way, that fuse will be linked in the description below. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so if you guys happen to need that fuse, if you guys purchase it through that link, I will get a little small commission off of it. It's not much. It doesn't cost you guys anything, but it helps support the channel. And uh, I can keep bringing you guys these videos. So if you do use those links, I appreciate it. Thanks. Um, back to the oven. All right, here it is, folks. Um, getting these two screws out of this uh, control panel on this right-hand side and also the left-hand side to get this control panel off. Um, I think you'll actually see me do this on the left-hand side, but it's the same on the left as it is on the right. Um, get those four screws out, and this panel will come right off for you. You'll see it right here. Once you get that off, you got two wire connections one on the right one on the left and then you got that ground that green wire that's on the left you get those off and then you can set your panel off to the side and you can see that fuse a little bit well not really my arms in the way but uh i'll point to it here in a few right there that's the fuse we're going to be looking at uh, power is on on this unit so i start on one side uh, ground with my black wire and then red and I get 120 on that side so power to the fuse is good and then I check the other end we get nothing that tells me that that fuse is bad you can also do continuity check that'll work as well all right now we know that fuse is bad so we're gonna swap it out um, I did turn power off on it already you guys didn't see it but power is off um, but real easy 
Um, got these two connections or these two clips to remove it. Then you just remove the wire connections to the fuse and it's pretty easy. They're color coded. White goes to white, black goes to black. Uh, can't do it wrong <laughs> as long as you got the right fuse. So yeah, got the new one. We're going to plug it in on the black, plug it in on the right and then put it back in the holes where those clips go. Yeah guys, it's real easy to do as long as you know what to look for because uh, certain situations point to certain parts. Like that question I asked you at the beginning of this video. Um, if you know that the broil and the bake element don't work, there's only a few things it could be. Most likely your elements are not bad. And I'm giving you guys a little hint there. Uh, but yeah, um, fuses in, time to put the control panel back on. And uh, while I was putting this thing back together, um, the customer did turn the power on for me. So you'll see once I get this thing in and the screws back in, the lights will already be on. So I'm not a magician. Customer helped me out a little bit on it. Um, but yeah, once you get these connections back on, you're, you're pretty much safe. Um, don't need to worry about hurting yourself or nothing. So, you know, once you get this thing plugged back in and that panel's back into place, you can test to make sure uh, that the repair is finished. And you guys may see that little bag on the right hand side. The customer asked me, they were like, What is that? And I was like, Oh, that's a well hidden secret. That's the tech sheet. Um, so, if you guys need the schematic for something different, that's where it is. Um, pull it out a little bit don't have to pull it out far five inches four or five inches or so and you'll be able to get that schematic out um, as long as you know it's not a the hole is like perfectly made for this thing so real easy to do I'll run into some where I have to remove an oven and it is just hell getting it back in that hole so this one's not that hard as long as they got good cabinet makers and everything which in this case it was, and it worked out perfectly. But yeah, now you see lights are on. Um, this is where you can test the, the bake and all that, make sure everything's good to go. Yeah, but all that's done. So we're gonna push it back in the hole, get those two screws back in that I didn't get footage of getting it out. Um, so this is what I was talking about at the beginning. And yeah, that's it. You are pretty much done. Um, this finishes up the repair on this guy. Oh, I do want to mention one other thing here at the end. Uh, I'll let you know what the customer did to cause this to happen. And also give you some more tips on um, if you have an oven like this, how to prevent it from happening again. So y'all stay tuned. Uh, got some more tips for you coming right up. All right, now what this customer was doing, she was cooking a roast at 500 degrees and she cooks it for say an hour. Then she turns the oven off completely, keeping the roast inside the oven uh, for it to cool down while it's cooking the roast a little bit longer. I don't know what it's called, but I hear people do it quite often. And what she was thinking on her oven, cause she hasn't done it on this oven before. What she does is, she does it in her old oven. She even told me she has a uh, an old oven that her husband puts on his welding bench for her so she, she can actually do this. So one of her friends told her, well, whenever you cook it, just turn the breaker off so your cooling fan don't come on. And what this cooling fan does is it cools down your electronics. So whenever she turned off that breaker, that cooling fan wasn't on and that heat rose comes out the door seal hits that fuse that's right above that and it blows it um, she knows better now she's not gonna do it again 
Um, I told her how that cooling fan works. It's not supposed to cool down the oven, which to my knowledge, it doesn't. If it does, let me know, because I told her, I don't think it does. So I told her to give it a shot, how she would normally do it in her new oven. Don't turn off the fuse after you finish cooking something. Um, if it's still hot in the oven, that cooling fan, it needs to run. So make sure you don't turn that breaker off while it's still hot. You can do it when it's cool, no problem, not while it's hot. Um, once that cooling fan turns off, if you want to turn the breaker off, that's fine. Otherwise, don't do it. This fuse can blow. Uh, some other things that can cause this fuse to blow is running self-clean. If you run self-clean, those things get upwards around 900 degrees or so. That's real hot. That heat can come out of that gasket and it can blow that fuse. Another thing, whenever you cook cheesecake, recipes tell you to open the door and let the heat escape while your cheesecake is still on the inside there. Because apparently, if you pull that cheesecake out, put it on top or put it on the counter or whatever, uh, that your crust can break. Uh, I only know this because I cooked the cheesecake a couple months ago. Turned out pretty good. <laughs> but anyway, if you open the door and let the oven cool with the door open, that heat's just going to go up. Heat's going to go up, it's going to hit that fuse, and it's going to blow it. So keep the door closed, let your oven cool down naturally. Don't leave the door open. And last thing would be your cooling fan. If your cooling fan fails, um, your fuse can go out. Say you replace this fuse, then the fuse goes out again the next time you use it. Check your cooling fan, make sure that cooling fan is working. If it's not cooling down those electronics, it's gonna blow that fuse. Just like what happened to uh, this lady that I was at, you know, doing this repair for her. It'll be very similar, except she caused it and it wasn't the cooling fan. So yeah, cooling fan can fail, self-clean can cause it, opening the door and letting your oven cool that way can cause it, and turning the breaker off. Um, and turning when you turn the breaker off, turn it off the cooling fan. Anyways, that's it folks. That's all the tips I have for you. If you got any questions, comments or anything comment down below again i appreciate you guys watching all the subscribers out there can't thank you enough um answer that trivia question if you guys know what it is and we'll see y'all in the next one